Welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host. This is not Box Press. This is Unbox Live. <laughs> How's it going? Friday's great. Hey, how are you? Yeah, was, I'm just a guy sitting here smoking a cigar trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> That's awesome. Who's the guy next to me? I'm Nate Beck, the other host. Love it. You guys, we have a very interesting show, and I am looking forward to discussing inexpensive cigars for the budget because everyone knows the budget's getting real tight gas prices went up yep things are happening out there you want to smoke the same amount of cigars you're gonna to have to free up a few dollars exactly because covid uh kind of took a hit on all our wallets well that and the just the gas prices alone i mean holy right Toledo. and i don't know about you but i smoked way more cigars the last couple of years because we're all working from home walking the dog so we got to have those sticks that you can smoke regularly that you really enjoy, but are at a much more affordable price point. Exactly. And I was cruising through Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 magazine because I started to notice a bunch of cigars that were less than eight bucks. And I was like, well, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. And then I opened up the 25th or 25 cigars, um, Top 25 magazine. And I was like, there's a whole page here on 20 cigars for less than six bucks and they rank them and one of them got a 93. This one right here. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So I want to give you some tools to help you decide whether or not you want to go out and purchase these brands from your brick and mortar or just search for cigars that are at a lower rate. There's two main functions on the Cigar Aficionado website that allow you to do that. I have the links to both of these inside the description on YouTube. So let's get into it because let's work with the top 20 list right there. First one we see is the Don Diego Lonsdale. This is made by Altidus. Um, if we click on the view tasting notes, really easy to get in here and be like, okay, what's the strength, uh, strength of this? What's the ring gauge, the length, and then the points. Yep. And then, of course, wrapper, filler, binder. I love all that stuff, but they've gotten really generic lately. Yeah. So it's kind of not as fun. Right. Because I don't know if this is, is this a Connecticut shade from Ecuador? Is this a, uh, I mean, it says the wrapper is U.S. Connecticut shade. So, okay, that's, oh, right, that's good, actually. That one actually we, is pretty descriptive. We know yep. it's not from Ecuador. We yep. know it's from uh, United States. So if you like Connecticut shade, great. And the price point. $5.74. Now, those that live in a high tax state, MSRP is just MSRP. Whether it goes up or down from there, I can't help you there. Yeah, here I mean, in Minnesota, we add what? $1. fifty. Fifty cent cap right now, which is really yep. nice. But the key to this is just to get you close, hopefully, to that lower price point. Because, I mean, ultimately, if you go into a brick and mortar and this cigar is, you know, $5 more, I'd start having a conversation with the, the owner and going, what, what's going on? Like right. where you're twice the price, you right. know, but if it's like a, within a dollar yep. to two, I'm not that much worried about it. No, it's and just part of, it is what it is. And there are some States that have comically high tax rates on cigars, California being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, cigars are just going to be considerably more expensive, even for value sticks. So the problem that I always have though, with value sticks or anything in this nature is construction. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that into consideration. It may not be as great of construction, or maybe it is, but the burn is a little off. Or mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know. I've we've smoked all of these eight, all top of them. eight. Yep. And I've only smoked one, maybe two, of each of these. So take our recommendations with a grain of salt because. Yep. You know, if you're really supposed to do a test like Charlie Minato from Half Wheel does three to give him a give himself like a good fighting chance to say, well, was that just this cigar? Just this one cigar? Was it another one? I mean, these are natural products, guys. I mean, can't and get I, them right all the time. And I can't think it would matter too much where you take them from in the box because those boxes are not a lot of space. So it it's not like it's a huge humidor and you're taking from the top versus the bottom. I, I was but always I, told by uh, scar makers like don't roll cigars on Mondays because you know 
after a long weekend, you might be a little, I don't know, either hung over or just like, hey, I'm getting back into the swing of right. things. So every time I get a bad cigar, I'm like, oh, it must have been rolled on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I've never heard that. It's a Monday stick. I love that. Uh, so I don't know. It's kind of true of every job. It's fun. Uh, Shake the cobwebs out. Yeah. Anyways, I think, I hope you guys like this tool. I think it's valuable. If you value cigar fishing out of ratings, I have never found a single article. And we were to t- trying to find this uh-huh. before is like, how do they score the cigar? What's the point sheet? Right. I have no idea. I'd be really curious. I don't like that. I don't know. I like to know things mm-hmm. and I like to know how it's being done. Exactly. And I don't like the fact. So if anyone else has that, like, if you know, put a link in the comments to an article, to uh, anything that would help direct us to. Well, and I think in most things, wouldn't you say that the more transparency there is, the more you can trust the end result of something? I would hope so. And I can't imagine there'd be any sort of secrecy behind Cigar Aficionado's uh, scoring sheet uh, because we're basically tasting, you know, you're looking at construction. You're looking at burn, flavor, overall characteristics of the cigar. Those are pretty general things that most cigar reviewers probably go through and score. But it'd be interesting to see how many different line items they have or how many different right. categories or boxes they score. Do they do 10 points and then total up based on each one to right. get to that 100-point scale? There's got to be a breakdown, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, so. Like Pravada Cigar Club was really good at this. They came out with the tasting sheet that you could laminate and then like, you know, write your score down on and like score it yourself. There's other Cigar of the Month clubs that do Mm -hmm. that, have those resources for you. Yeah. Um, I think Cigar Journal, I don't know if they're more transparent about it or not, but I really would like to see the dang sheet because I want to try to do my own review of this and see if I hit 93 on this or not. Yeah. Like. I remember going through, uh, and it's a similar process, through a coffee cupping with a local coffee producer. And the detail to the sheet that you had to go through and write down flavor notes and your score and watching the professionals go through and cup all these different coffees, it was, they were writing furiously and I'm still on the first cup trying to figure out what I'm tasting because I'm the newbie. So, So what does amalgam mean? Um, I don't know if I'm tasting that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or what was the one you said yesterday? You said something uh, like metally and you're like, I don't know if I taste metal, like aluminum or sure a zinc or something like that. Well, Anyways. it's like in that movie Psalm about the master sommeliers, mm-hmm. freshly cut garden hose. And another one they used was a freshly opened tube of tennis balls. Now, I, I do know what that smells like, but I don't think I would be like, no. But that's a really distinct smell. I remember as a kid loving opening up a can of tennis balls and going, oh, it smells really good. It's like Tommy boy smelling his fingers after he gets gas on him. He's like, (laughs) 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 maybe that's a guy thing. I don't know. Okay. So Tyler Johnson says he has the scoring sheet Cigar Journal uses if y'all want that one. Yes. Yes. How do you like, how do we get it? Can you put a link to it? Is it in an article? Is it? Uh, where can we get this? Put a link. If you can't, email it to info at bovidainc.com and or we will take it. you can follow us on Instagram yep. and send us a direct message with the link. Bo- um, Bovida Inc. Yep, and we'll reach Instagram. out to you. Yeah, we would love. I would love that because I think this is the part that I see. Okay, if there's some special secret sauce to this like rating process, but, like that's over to me. Like That's mm-hmm. overrated. Like let's just get out there and and help each other. Uh-huh. And I don't I would say this. I wouldn't use it a lot cuz you guys know my tasting uh prowess. Is oh. that a good word for? It? Prowess, yes. That's prowess? A, yep. It's uh-huh. really low. <laughs> really low. <laughs> like when Nate is like, "Oh, I taste uh figs on the cold draw." I'm like, "Sure." sure. I have no idea. You got a good one though 2 weeks ago. What? Uh, when we were doing the uh, Cigar University mm-hmm. Toasted Marshmallow. Yes. But that was like smack you in the face. Right. Like, right. If it's not evident, I'm grasping for straws, guys. Mm-hmm. I taste tobacco. I taste fermented tobacco. I taste 
aged tobacco? <laughs> like, my tasting sheet's going to be real specific over here. Uh, taste Barney? I th- like Barnyardy? I think, though, like a flavor wheel could help you. Sure could. For sure. I know but- uh, Standard and Twain, who does like Cigar Aficionado. Sure. Completely unbanded, so you can taste it blind. They're, you know, they send you, what, two or four uh, note cards, and they have flavor notes already listed out. Now, are there other flavors? Sure. But a lot of them will be similar. So it gives you uh, a list to choose from. It's kind of like taking a test where you have to write out your answer versus multiple choice. If you have some options, you can maybe zone in on, oh, I think it tastes kind of like this. Because you might know what that tastes like. Like often in cigars, you get uh, a real noticeable like dried fruit. And the easiest one to know is we all know what raisins smell and taste like. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an easy one to go, okay, it tastes like raisins or dried plum, you know, prunes or cherries. You can kind of get in that wheelhouse and then you can kind of distill out, well, what kind of dried fruit do I taste? So it gives you uh, a baseline of flavors that you can choose from. And that's, I think that's helpful a lot because if you have to just look at an empty sheet and say, what do you taste here? That's kind of intimidating. That's where I, that's where my brain goes blank. And you did that to me the other day. You're like, Rob, what are you tasting? I go, I have no idea. (laughs) So, uh, Gimpy 91 has the Pravada one in a PDF, possibly. Tyler says he's got his in a PDF. Matt, can you put our website or our email in, uh, the chat or in a comment or a banner? I don't care, whatever. Yeah, if you go down to the bottom there, Matt, you can just post it. Put both Rob and I's emails. The, the info app, please. The info app? Yeah, all right. I'll let Linda know. <laughs> this might be coming your way. Uh, I trust it's you guys, but not that knowledge, much. Right? I have a lot of stuff coming into my <laughs> inbox already. Um. Anyways, this is the interesting part. So this has been my shtick with Cigar Aficionado from day one. Is like I have no idea how this is rated, I, and I don't know if I can... And I think everyone has always thought, are they buying the ratings? I'm less likely to say that they're buying the ratings. I, 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 I mean, this. I would agree with you. The Boyne of Ventura rated a 90. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to the list because yep. you're going to see, I don't think they're buying the ratings, but you know, that's up to you. Go to the next one. This is the one that I'm smoking. The Boyne of Ventura Pralines P554, just under six bucks. Great cigar. I was just actually smelling the 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 smoke coming off the foot of the cigar and going, ah, oh, I like that. That's mm-hmm. like smells really good. And that's where I lie in my ratings. It's like, does it taste good? Yes. I can get to like it's kind of bitter, it's kind of sweet, mm-hmm. it's kind of off-putting, it's too acrid or acid. Uh-huh. And then I get to the point where I'm like, do I even like the smell? And I'm going to tell you right now, especially in this tasting that we did this week, Nate. I have a real hard problem sometimes, I think, with Connecticut, U.S. Connecticut. And back to that Don Diego, no hit on them. But when I smoked that, my beard smelt like kind of like an ashtray. For sure. And cigars will do that. In fact, there are days I come home from work having cigars and my wife will say it's like, you know, a blend of, you know, your if you wear a, a cologne plus your cigar, it makes a really pleasant smell. And then there are other days you smoke a cigar or a couple cigars, and it's a really off-putting smell. Like it's a really acrid um, ashtray kind of smell. Yeah, ashtray. It's like, a, and I, I get it, right? Kind of okay, a cheap so cigar kind of smell. Connecticut is probably going to be the closest to probably what cigarettes are made out of. Connecticut, mm-hmm. you know, leaf. Anyways, when it has that smell, yep, it's off-putting to me, and it ruins it yeah i will say you know since this was the lowest or the you know kind of the first one that was in the 90 yeah i thought the construction like the kind of the burn and the smoking experience was just fine but this was my this was the bottom of the list for me which is appropriate because it's the lowest of the 90s i i can't say i enjoyed the cigar okay Um, this cigar just didn't hit really many of the notes that i like or look for in a cigar and complexity is a little lost here at mm-hmm. this price point. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get complexity. And I absolutely love complexity in a cigar. So <laughs> kind of have to like throw that Put out the Put up the, the boba to comment. 
<laughs> What's going on? Since we were listening to 80s music before we started uh, filming today, Nate's personal cell is 8675309. <laughs> well played. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, good humor there. Love it. So Ted Oliver says, I have the same problem. I have the same problem. I have hard times tasting different flavors. Is there a way to help me? I would say I, getting a flavor wheel. Yep. And I, a thing that helps me a lot is if you taste something that seems familiar, try to take, try to think through foods or beverages that remind you of that flavor. Right. And then you can look up and see what their flavor notes are for that type of food. Or, you know, if it's something like, God, I feel like this really tastes like brownies. It probably does. The other thing I'm going to do another video later on this year with, uh, Tyler Pappenheim from Altidus because his video, How to Taste Cigars Better, got over like 180,000 views and I had no idea that that was so popular. So this is an area that we definitely want to highlight. Yep. And he's going to help us with just your simple spices that are in your house, like black pepper, white pepper, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, all that. Like You should literally pull those out and smell them and vanilla. Did like I mention this before? Uh, I've seen it in a couple movies and Davidoff actually had it as part of a display for cigar retailers. For each of their kind of core line cigars, they had three jars and you yeah. can open each one. And those were prominent notes that they know are in that cigar. Like, hey. Yep. And uh, graham cracker or uh, dried flowers or raisins. Black, black pepper, raisins, any kind of dried fruit. Yeah. Uh, if you make up, you know, look at some of the cigars you like, look up some tasting reviews, like go to half wheel or go to cigar aficionado, find some comparable or some common flavor notes, and then put those in little jars and just put them in a shoe box or in a, you know, a container. And then when you're smoking that cigar, if you think you smell one or taste one, pull that up, smell it, and then see if you taste it when you smoke it again. Right. It helps a lot. It's like a, uh, a sensory experience. And I've even tried to get like, some reviews are like, oh, it's nutty. And I'm like, I don't know what kind of nuts I'm tasting here. Yeah. Open up a jar of peanuts. <laughs> Matt. <God. laughs> Can't say anything on this episode without you guys going straight to the gutter. Uh, no, but like seriously, I bought raw almonds. Yep. Raw walnuts and raw peanuts. Yep. Just to try to help myself. And I'm not going to finish the rest of that, but you know, in yes. that area. Uh huh. So. Yeah, that's what I would say. I get you. cinnamon, like in cigars I really like. Uh, a prominent cinnamon note is really desirable for me with cigars. If and you have cedar. that cedar, of course. Like you could take a box of cigars yep. and just smell the cedar wood if it's made out of cedar or yep. the cedar spills. You can, I've actually yep. licked a cedar spill. Have you? Yeah. Just to see, I'm like, does it taste weird? Well, like even tongue? cedar shavings, you know, often are pretty. Um, if you have shoe trees, like if you're a guy that has dress shoes and you have shoe trees, they're going to be made out of cedar. Don't lick those, though. Don't lick them. Don't 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 lick those. If you if <laughs> you take them, a here's sticky. a tip: if you take them out of your shoe and you, they don't smell like anything, just take a little bit of sandpaper, yeah, and then smell that cedar, and then see if you pick that up in the cigar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> don't lick them. Don't lick it. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i digress so i can't really figure out what cigar aficionado is doing i got to get better tools you have a pantry with spices now it's just like up to you to decide which of these budget sticks you like and that same process works for any kind of beverage uh because you'll often as you're as you drink it you go oh everything's kind of a, a blur i don't know what i'm tasting if you can smell those things, especially things that are part of the place where the cigars are made, that's also really helpful. Let's get into this. Well, let's talk about the ones that you maybe liked, or let's just talk about this crema because it was rated 93. Matt, you can go back to that one that you're showing. 93. You guys, that's a pretty high score for something less than six bars. Sorry, came in at six bucks. Yep. I'm just shocked that there's even... So this is why I don't feel like it's bought. Just this alone. They, I don't think this company advertises in Cigar Aficionado. I don't think they do. Just, well, what? A few years ago, Casa Magna was a like a bargain cigar, and that was Cigar of the Year. Right. 
So I just don't think they, I don't know. Yeah. It's got to be, they rate, I don't know how big their tasting panel is either, but they rate over 600 cigars every year. Yep. And they're smoking six to 12 cigars a day blind. So they have one person that buys all their cigars, typically at retail. They take all the bands off and they have a process for removing the band so they don't damage the wrapper. Then they put on a numbered plain white band and hand them out to the tasters. Right. And then that corresponds to a spreadsheet that has all the cigars listed and then they rate it and then compile that. And the tasters don't know what they smoked or how they rated it. But I will say this, and I learned this from Nick Perdomo. He does his where if you're actually blind tasting a cigar, he blindfolds you and you have a partner. Oh. So, and I thought this was very interesting because if you took the band off this one, I already know the color of the wrapper. Mm -hmm. I might be, oh God, it's Connecticut. It's going to make my mouth taste like an ashtray. Uh huh. I already am like, I'm prejudging the cigar. Sure. So you could actually, you know, if you want to take it to the next level as far as blind tasting, you get a partner and that partner then is the one that cuts your cigar lights it for you yep. and then hands it to you and then you have to oh i like that verbally say what you're tasting and your partner writes it down i think we should try that i think we should too nick perdomo shout out to you thanks for that tip that i absolutely want hugely to do, beneficial i totally want to do that yeah so that if you want to take your tasting to the next level that's what i would do uh-huh but this was rated 93 i smoked it twice I will say this, the first time I smoked it, I was on a walk with my family and my daughter was not wanting to sit in the stroller. My dog was all <laughs> over the place and I just gave up on the cigar. I was like, this is, I can't do this. This is not working. And the second time I smoked it, I just didn't get, I was like a 93. This is not a 93, is it? But that was my take on it. Yeah. First time I smoked it as well, I was uh, inside smoking through all these cigars and I didn't enjoy the first one of these I had. This is my second of the Cremas, and I'm liking it a whole lot more. You can go back to that. This is really yeah, good. Let's, let's see the breakdown of this. Again, this is where they don't get super technical, like the wrapper, Ecuador. Okay, so what type though? Connecticut shade? Probably. Mm -hmm. It's predominantly grown in Ecuador. Um, yep. Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. And don't know what that means. Wouldn't you say, Rob, it's becoming increasingly more common that cigar manufacturers are just putting undisclosed. Yes, for because everything. of the FDA stuff. And I don't yep. like it. Because I don't either. I don't think that's fair. I want to know mm -hmm. what I'm tasting because it matters in my opinion. But then again, if you're just blind tasting it, do you like it or not? Yep. And what do you taste? So if you want to throw up Paul's comment there at the bottom, What's the flat sided cigar you have, please? I'm assuming he means this one, the one There's that I'm pointing pressed. to in the, the box press. This is the it's the, the pralines. pralines by Buenaventura. The second 90 on the list. Yep. I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah, that's the only box press in this yep. whole selection. So if you went back down to the 90 point. One more. Yeah. Yeah, that pralines. It's the P554. Yep. I will say, though, I'm a huge fan of simple, classic, really classic Cuban cigar bands. Mm -hmm. And this is this is just perfect. It's just a really clean, attractive label, I think. Mm -hmm. So go back to the 90, 93, sorry, the Buenaventura 93, the top yep. one. Go to the tasting notes. It says strength. I was surprised to see this creep up above medium and I get it now. I kind of, after I think about it, it, it does have a bitter strength note to it. Mm -hmm. Like a yep. acidic. Uh huh. And it's bitter on the middle of my tongue, like middle to front of my tongue. Yep. And then the lateral. Uh huh. Lateral business on the side. I, I generally am kind of int intrigued or. I enjoy a little bit of bitterness because I think it accentuates all the other flavors. But I'm really enjoying this second cigar. I'd like to smoke a few more of these. 
the construction on this is beautiful. Yeah, I would say for a value stick, this company is definitely, if you haven't had Buena Ventura, it's, it's checking all the boxes of like, hey man, great stick for not a lot of money. And I would, you know, if you find one that you like, I like the P554 much better, the Praline. I would give that to somebody who doesn't smoke cigars a lot because it's not going to break my bank. Right. And I'm not going to feel bad if you don't smoke the whole thing. Yep. And that's the other thing. Like if we go down a little bit there, Gran Habano Corojo number five. Let's show this little, let's show this little bad boy here. This. Matt, if we can close up on this one. This little guy tastes amazing. So it's a little petite Corona. And this cigar is a flavor bomb. It's great. But this one was my favorite. Universally here at Boboda, yes. everyone agrees that this is a really good cigar. Yeah. I. What do they call it? The lunch break? This is called the lunch break because of its yep. size. It's so, so tiny. I prefer this in the Robusto size. A little bit bigger, a little bit cooler of a smoke. Sure. Less of that bitter flavor coming through. But the flavor on this is just right up my alley. Yep. Whatever that flavor is. Couldn't tell you. And look at it. It's, the strength says full. I didn't I didn't get full strength out of this. I again though, you and I have discussed at length. I don't know. Our our ability to taste strength in a cigar kind of is right. diminished because we smoke a lot of cigars. But but this is a great little stick. So then here's the other thing I I go with, and I started off saying like I was just gonna do this with going through the magazine, looking at what cigars are basically under eight bucks and what did they score at? And I, I really wasn't worried about the number. I was more worried about the price point. So let's go to the search option that Cigar Aficionado has. And just even on the light there, man, that smells amazing. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, this little quick break size oh, is awesome. This is great. Matt, if you want to go back to the comments for a quick second, I'd like to speak to uh, Gimpy91's comment there, the most recent one, the bottom there. Maybe they kept the price in mind and scored the cigars with a curve to the points. Well, if we're taking Cigar Aficionado at their word, all of these are included across the board with no indication of price, manufacturer, location. It's all done blind. So, right. I don't think they take price into account. I think that only comes into play after they have rated the cigars and then they list out the price point of each cigar and say, hey, these are cigars that scored really highly in our blind tasting and they're a good value. So I don't think they do take that into consideration mm -hmm. if we're taking them at their word. Yeah. So, but, and how do, this link is in the description as well, but you can get to this Various ways. Their, their website is tough to search. Really tough. But it, if you went to ratings and reviews, right? Is that how we got here? We went there. And then right there, advanced search. Look for anything specific. And hit, click on advanced search now. Okay, on the top, right away, if you wanted to find this Corojo number five, you could just type that into the top search bar and you could get it right away. Or what I wanted to do is click the score. So I'm interested in anything over 90. And then I don't care about brands and country of origin or yep. anything like that. And then price point, I'm really surprised that they don't have six on here. Because right? I thought because they did the article, they'd put a six in there. But you could say eight, you could say 10, you could say whatever you want. But like eight and under, great. And I don't care about size. I don't care about tasting date. You could if you were like, I just only want to know what was smoked within the last year. Great, but I leave it all open. Any issue, anything, then click search and boom, there you get a list. Now, let's see. Can you filter this by score? Go to the top ones. Advanced filters. Oh, no, that just brings you back to that. Okay, yep. so they don't put it by score because if you close that, yeah, it's like 90, 92. The scores are all over the place. Yep. So you just have to comb through here, I guess. Mm -hmm. But go down to the bottom. There's a ton of pages on this. It looks like they're in there by date of review. 60 pages. You see that, Rob? 
I think they're categorized by date or review. Is there a way, Matt, up at the top to filter? Mm -mm. There isn't, is there? I mean, you can. You can go down to tasting date. Right. Issue date. But there's no No, way to filter the list. Yep. But if you do scroll down, go to page two and let's just see if the date keeps going. That might be the way they rank. So you have February 1st, 2022. So they probably go by issue. But I got to believe that there's more cigars out there. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Okay. So. Yep. It looks like it. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I'm only using Cigar Aficionado because of the race. You could use Cigar Club or Cigar Journal. You could use any, I mean, the big shtick. I mean, obviously, this has been in social media, especially with Pravada and stuff like that. But you don't have to believe in this. I'm just trying to use tools that are out there that are hopefully less less salesy and more yeah. just like, here's the cigar. Here's what we thought it was. Here's the price point. Purely data driven. Right. I just mm-hmm. want data. Yep. Obje- I guess you'd use objective rather than subjective. Correct. As, as much of objective as you can mm-hmm. get, you got to get yep. in here and try these before, but at least this can point you in the right direction. Yep. If you're trying to walk into a humidor and figure it out, you can at least go in with a couple of earmark cigars and say, Hey, do you carry this? Yep. Gilberto Oliva Reserva, and they might say yes or yep. no, or and you know. I think you and I would both agree that Cigar Aficionado's website is a little tricky to navigate. Mm-hmm. However, I do like when you actually click through, like Matt, if you can click onto the tasting notes of that uh, Gilberto Oliva, it is pretty clean. Like it's not too much mm-hmm. information. It's easy to see. There's a large, prominent picture of the cigar. The photography is pretty good. Uh, I think it's easy to to navigate that part of it. It's got all the information you'd want. Pretty simple tasting notes, so it's not right. too complicated. This Corojo. This is great. Number five, this lunch break from Grand Habano. Dude, just great. It's really chocolatey. Really? You're getting yeah. chocolate? I'm yeah. getting like the bitter notes. Like dark chocolate, but dark chocolate mm. has a lot of bitterness to all it. Right. It's so funny you, because American our our chocolate that we eat isn't actually even really chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Okay. Let's go back to that because this is what we're jamming on right now. Ninety one. Let's view the tasting notes on it. This was in August of last year. This is a great little cigar. Hmm. More Toast. reviews of this cigar. That's interesting. So a ninety one. And an 85, what scored 85? Can you click on that? It's that cigar, but way back in 2010. So same cigar. Weird. 2010, it got an 85. Yep, with no strength. And Listed. ninety, and in 2021, it gets 91. Interesting. Inter- yeah, that's, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, I didn't know. This is. And they do that for every cigar. If they've reviewed it before. On that right side, they'll list out all the other times they've reviewed the exact same cigar. So immediately my question goes, how can it get better? That's right. my question right away. How can it get better if it's the same blend? Is that based on the crop that year? I would have to think so. Is that based on the tobacco panel? Changes. Maybe. The tasting panel? Maybe. Yep. Is that based on a different way that they score now? Are there different points involved? Well, you got to think... All companies have turnover and you got to think, you know, Cigar Aficionado probably keep, they have employees that have been there for quite some time, but you might get new tasters and maybe they rotate their tasting panel. Go. Okay. So there's one company that comes springs straight to mind, which is Metropolitan, uh, Nat Sherman now owned by Ferio Tago. Go to the search real quick, the advanced search. And let's just type in, um, Let's timeless? Type, yeah, timeless. Type timeless in. I wonder if they've reviewed it recently. Because I'm I want to see if like, okay, now just click on the first one. 92 view tasting notes. This is the prestige especial. Dang it. Go to the next one. Right. It only has one rating of 92. I, I wonder if they see. have rated them since they the 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 change in ownership. Well, even if they haven't. 
Michael Hurtlock's always said their biggest thing that they're trying to do with the brand is make sure every year it's consistent. Smoking, smoking, consistency. Sure. Always having, uh, man. They're all just one review, yeah. Keep going, Matt. See if we find anything. There, oh, there we go. That's the same year. But it's two different reviews. So Cigar Insider and Aficionado, but same score. Yeah, but I would... Yeah. Okay. That's same year, though. I want to see if we can get some different years out mm -hmm. of this. There, try that one, the Super Lancero. That's not a popular size, though, right? It's not, but... Oh, look at that. It's got a couple. There, oh, both God, 2018. 2018. 9090. We're striking out. All right. Well, yep. I was trying to figure out whether or not a company that really says, hey, we we look to be consistent. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's... 2015 and 2013. See, now this is what I would expect. Like, okay, maybe a point or two difference, right, right. but not a ton. But not this is a, six points. Not an 85 to 91. Right. That would. Now that, it is 11 years. Yeah. And d did the blend change? Did Maybe. the crop change? Did. I, I just don't know. And and mainly, especially in this value area, did the. Was the rolling better now? Construction better? Like right. what about the score went to be six points better? And this is my gripe with ratings. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I can't compare the two tasty notes or the overall view or <laughs> overall rating. Right? Like, like there's nothing that gives me enough data to get there. Yep. So, I mean, take this with a grain of salt, like what you got. Um, go to the Nat Seco. This was a great cigar, bigger ring gauge, this one for sure. Um, but this, does this come in a smaller ring gauge? I'm not sure. But I really like Nat Seco. Now, we've done with Nat Seco, we did a whole video on value sticks. Short filler, value sticks, probably less than five bucks. And they were just phenomenal for a value stick. And this is a premium value stick. This mm -hmm. is full uh, leaf, no, no chopped up leaves in here. And I smoked this yesterday and I thought it was great. Yeah, this is what this was one of my favorites. And so this yep. is the Casino Real. They also have the HHB and they have the Nat Seco like 1965 or something. Right. Very great cigars. They all generally get pretty well reviewed. Yeah, I I'm a fan of Nat Seco from a perspective of especially value and quality being on point. And that one was rated twice. What were the years on that one? A uh, year apart. Okay. Well, not quite a year, like six months. Okay. No, not even four or five months. And that's an interesting thing there. There's like a subscribe to Cigar Insider for only two ninety five a month. Like if you really want this, but I mean, ultimately to me, you can get it through just searching here. Right. If you want. So um, I wish I could say more. I mean- I would love for Cigar Aficionado to try to release some helpful tools that'll let us understand how they rate cigars yep. so that we can see if we rate them the same way. Now, you smoked the charred oak just above that. You can stay on that screen, Matt, if you want. The 92, that was a great cigar. Charred oak was great. Yep. The Habana Lonsdale, great. I, I smoked that first cigar mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great cigar. Now, I'm also a big fan of Foundation cigars. I tend to like a lot of their uh, a lot of their sticks. That's a great cigar. I'd smoke that all the time. Man. So, I mean, my top, obviously, I, I believe it was this Corojo, the Gran Habano Corojo number five, the dog walker or the lunch break, whatever you want to call it. The La Aurora Cameroon right underneath that, that was great as well. Um, and then the, the Nat Seco Casino Real was great. I mean, I think those were my top three. Yep. And then I think I remember we both liked this one as oh, well. The Project, Project 40. 
scroll down a little bit, Matt. Project 40 by... I think Perdomo. it's a 91, right? Keep keep going. Right. 90. Uh, 90. So, okay. Here's where I typically smoke uh, Alec Bradley. I smoke probably some of their more newer lines that are coming out. Yep. Not a ton of, you know, the other stuff. And I felt like... I wasn't going to like this one, but it was very similar to this Gran Habano as yeah. far as flavor. I really enjoyed it. Yep. Great cigar. Great size. Great cigar. I mean, they're out there. They're just, you know, sometimes I, we actually kind of, we had to order from three different websites to get these. Right. So that not everyone has them. And cigars like this, I found at least in our local shops, they don't tend to be readily available just because I think these budget sticks kind of get a bad rap. And so they don't tend to stock heavy in these types of cigars. Right. Uh, but all, all of these, I would say really with the exception of this Don Diego, that was the only one that I kind of put to the bottom of the list. Still sure. a decent cigar, but I really enjoyed this. Ch again, chocolatey. Project 40. Great construction. I mean, it's really well filled, firm cigar, but wasn't a tight draw at all. I really enjoyed that cigar. The Cameroon had the sweetness that I like from La Aurora. That's mm -hmm. why I, I put it on my top three. It just, it, the overall taste of it was great. And it's a Churchill. So, I mean, you got plenty of room to yep. keep going with that. Uh -huh. I mean, it was a great stick. I think for me, my top three were, number one was this Gran Habano, for sure. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. Number two would be the Charter Oak uh, Habano. Yep. And then I'd have to say, oh, I think it's a tie between the, Casino Real, the, the Casino Real from Nat Seco and the Project 40. Okay. Those two were a tie. And then the La Aurora, La Aurora would be next. Not bad. So really, all this was was to hopefully help you get some budget sticks or if you need to, if you want to keep smoking, because we're, I mean, hey, this is season opener for baseball. The Twins yep. are playing today. The, the weather's getting nicer. I'm going to be finding myself outside more often. I'm sure everyone else is uh, that lives in the north. And theoretically, I need some room in my budget to keep smoking the same mm -hmm. amount of cigars instead yep. of, I mean, otherwise you could just cut back on smoking cigars and keep your budget the same. But who wants to do that? That sounds terrible. That sounds terrible. Terrible. That's a horrible idea. So I just want to smoke more cigars <laughs> with less money. You know? Exactly. I mean, let's let's be honest because we all have other hobbies and vices that we like to uh put our money towards yeah yes yes yeah this would be near the top for me yeah but we still have other things yeah like camping i mean mm -hmm. shoot i just i just dropped a lot of money on camping equipment this year yep and shoes <laughs> don't get me started on don't shoes give me sh yeah Whew. anyways i hope we you digress. all enjoyed this episode i hope it gives you some insights I appreciate all the comments. Were there any comments that we missed, Matt? Um, let's see. Let's actually, I almost closed it out. We have the question section, Ask, ask Bovida. So let's get into that because there were three great questions that you guys asked. Yep. And if, if you have any more, keep submitting them. Uh, put them in the comments. We review our comments on all videos. Yep. And, and we try to reply to all of them, but it's a lot. So we try to get to them as well through videos. We take the top ones and we do it right here, right now. And then we put this in a section on our YouTube page called Ask Bovda. So let's hit it and let's get into this. All right. Go ahead, Nate. All right. So from JG, off topic, but I live in a really hot area during summertime, so it's difficult for me to keep a humidor at a good temperature. Summers are around 112 degrees Fahrenheit on average, and I keep my home around 78 because if it's lower than that, my AC bill will be over $500 a month. I get you. Is 78 a decent temperature for no more than 10 cigars inside the humidor, or what can I do? Rob, you had a great comment. I just on this. don't care about temperature when I'm using Boveda. I would agree. Uh, the Boveda takes over. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I, get, I mean, unless you're worried about cigar beetles, and even then, most of these New World cigars don't have cigar beetles. Well, let's think about it this way. If you go down to Nicaragua or the Dominican right. or Cuba, 
it's hot. probably close to 100 degrees and those cigars are all at ambient temperature yeah man i think we're gonna be okay i just don't care about temperature yep my coolador my winador i unplug it mm -hmm. it's unplugged it's a fancy cooler right now pretty much oh, sorry it's a fancy humidor because <laughs> yes. it doesn't cool it's i don't have it plugged in exactly so that's my answer to that there you go temperature doesn't matter as long as you're using bovina now if you're not using bovina temperature matters uh-huh because then that humidity and anyways i digress yep. Just use Bovida for consistency and you'll be fine. Temperature doesn't matter. Next question. All right. This is from Cha Cha Cafe. Hi, I just bought my first box of Partigas Mille Fleur Cubans and my first wooden glass top humidor. I want to season with the 84% Bovida pack. Which percentage pack would you recommend for storing after that? Being mindful that I don't have a preference as of yet as it is my first. I've been seeing some people mention storing Cubans at 65%, but given that the wood humidors are not airtight, what would you recommend to get to that 65% level? Thanks. I live in Los Angeles, so low humidity levels here. I would say I'd start with 69% in your wood humidor. You're probably going to lose 3 to 4% out through that glass top humidor because you're going to have some air leakage. Uh, I think that's going to get you pretty close to that 65%, probably between 63 and 65%. I will say I smoke nearly all of my cigars between 63 and 65%. Uh, a really good tool that's what, $25? If that. Which one? The Cigar Medics Humidimeter. 30 bucks, I think. 30 bucks. Pick up from Cigar Medics their Humidimeter. And you can actually, Rob might actually have one in his bag. You, always he always has it. I always have this in my bag. It works great. And it measures water level or water activity. And so you, you can test it. We have a video on this too. Mm -hmm. We interviewed these guys. Great guys. Yep. Um, you just turn it on. You stick it in. I like to stick it in the mouth side because that's like a better reading. Uh, but this is reading 58. And that's been sitting out for a couple hours. Right. And it was cut. And it was cut. Yep. So I cut the end of it. Now this one that has the cap still intact is reading 72, 71, 71. Yep. So that's a great tool to kind of give you a, a, a baseline as to how that humidity is holding. And if you find that it's really low, you can always bump up to 72%, especially in that wood humidor. Mm -hmm. um, and then if your cigars are, you know, closer to 67 to 69%, you can always leave them out at room temperature for half an hour to an hour before you smoke it and that'll allow it to dry a little bit. Um, and then you'll find a preference for where you like your cigars. Some people like closer to 70 to 72. I like it a little bit drier. I think it burns better. I think the flavor's better. So we all have our preference. And I highly recommend using twice the amount of Boveda. It sounds mm -hmm. stupid, but you're not going to waste your money. So like if you have a hundred count humidor, it's a 50 count. I don't know what size it is, uh, but we recommend at a minimum, one size 60 for every 25 cigars that the humidor holds. Yeah. So if it's 100 count, that's four. That's fine. But I double it because then the cigars, if they're dry or not at that RH on the pack, they'll come to equilibrium a little bit sooner. But it's more or less the insurance that I want that there's enough moisture to get because the cigars actually just do their own. They do their own. Um, regulating yeah if i can yeah. say it that way self-regulating they self-regulate yep. they don't like as long as the rh doesn't go out of the window now if you threw an 84 pack in there it, it will go up quicker and it will damage the cigar but mm -hmm. when it's at 69 where the cigar wants to be it can take four to six weeks to get up to there yep so it does its own self-regulating and i just toss the hygrometer out of my humidor because if you're using boda who cares yeah I mean, unless you don't know what your humidor is performing at, but you're seasoning with the 84, so you're already good there. Um, you're you're going to use Bovida. You're going to use the right amount. So then I would just invest in this, 30 bucks into this uh, humidimeter, and now you know exactly where those cigars are at. Because yep. no longer are you relying on the hygrometer to tell you what the air is at, because that doesn't matter. I've done it where cigars, the air is at 62%, because the cigars are taking the moisture in too quickly for the hygrometer. You got to look at this like a, a, kind of like a trade-off, right? The cigars are more powerful than the hygrometer if they need the moisture. So they're taking up the moisture and the bovid is supplying it. 
but the air is lower because the cigars are taking it. Yep. So I want to know what's inside the cigar. That's exactly. what this tool gives me. So yep. All right. anyways, good question. Great question. And good luck. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, uh, Pat P. I love the American from uh, the Newman's, JC Newman. Great cigar. Absolutely wonderful cigar. Boboda, I was wondering if you guys ever worked on that calculator for humidor seasoning or when it would be available. If not, thanks. Cheers. We are working on it. It's coming. But you can literally take a volume calculator, plug in length with height, and get the volume in cubic inches. And for every 200 cubic inches that your, high, that your humidor holds, use one size 60. Yep. That's the formula. I know the formula because we're testing it. Now we're just trying to produce the calculator so you guys can use it. So it's in the works. Uh, that's one of my main projects to get done this year. So we will have that all over our website uh, soon, hopefully at the end of this quarter. Awesome. Yeah. Great question. And that wraps up this Unbox Live. I thank you all for joining us. Nate, this was fun. This was a blast, Rob. Now, I love this. Now we got to go buy blindfolds. And exactly. that'll be the next one. I'm kind of excited for that. I'm very excited about yep. that. Yep. More content to come. Cheers. Have a great weekend. Cheers, Baseball guys. Season.